at the beginning when why he said, why are you underestimating me? you talking about the hockey interview. No, no, no. Oh, I, no, I didn't bring that up. Now I have oh, to yeah. know about the hockey Joy interview. Joy is just like, and we brought Teddy in because he knows nothing about <laughs> hockey. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to show how we all help each other. And I was like, yeah, like take Teddy, for example. He probably doesn't really know a lot about hockey. <laughs> Teddy okay. goes, Teddy's like, I have skates to... in my truck. He's yeah, Teddy's like, actually, I know a lot about hockey. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I really don't, though. The Game Room is a production of Lackawanna College, serving students, graduates, and our surrounding communities since 1894. This episode is supported by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel. Learn more at gamefuel.com. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I am Teddy Delaney, the eSports Program Director. We are here in the Lackawanna College Presidential Boardroom. This is the Game Room. I'm Robert Esker, and yes, we did not stage this. This is what the boardroom actually looks like in its natural state. How quaint. Yes, this podcast is going to be solely focused on everything collegiate eSports. You want the teams, you want the players, you want the big events, we got it right here. And we are going to always, every week, give you the latest updates related to esports with a special guest and then a little wrap up at the end just for you. Yes, it's going to be a lot of information on everything that you need to know that's going on in the collegiate esports world. And we're going to start today just like we start every episode with this week's patch notes. In 2018, we had three huge matchups in League of Legends, Overwatch, and Rocket League. The 2018 Fiesta Bowl Overwatch Collegiate National Championship was held in California between UC Berkeley and UC Irvine. UC Berkeley are the two-time champs. They came in with a 3-0 sweep against their rival UC Irvine, who are just right up the road. Um, they won 7K per player in this match. I love this team, Teddy. I have to say, UC Berkeley, they came in, and this was, this was their second match. This, their comeback kings, they came in, second season, completely brand new team. Everybody thought that they were going to stumble out the gate, and they put it together. And their comp, it's half of them can play every player on the roster, half of them can only play one. Yeah. But it's... it's they just dominate. Yeah, it's crazy to see that talent. And last year, they beat Rutgers, they beat University of Texas, and they beat the University of Toronto. And again, they beat University of Toronto in the semifinals to make it to UC Irvine. It was a crazy matchup. And again, they're defending champs. They're going to come back strong this year in 2019. Moving on to the 2018 League of Legends College Championship, we had UC Irvine versus Columbia College, another packed lineup. Uh, second seeded UC Irvine beat the fifth seeded Columbia College in another 3-0 sweep. Again, these teams are crazy to watch. The strats and... and, and I mean, with, with this, with this, kind of, this is the exact opposite of UC Berkeley. With Irvine, they spent two years building their team, working together, getting to get so that they can just play without even talking to each other. Yeah. And they came in and just dominated the competition. Absolutely. And again, uh, the entire UC Irvine team is returning back for the next two years. So they're looking to be the powerhouse for the next two years Definitely in League of Legends. Gonna keep our eye on that. They're gonna be a big contender, absolutely. Moving forward to the 2018 College Rocket League Championship, we had Arizona University versus the University of Northern Texas. Now, the championship this year was in Northern Texas, in Arlington, in the esports facility. So they had a big matchup against a huge hometown crowd. And something amazing happened in this, in this matchup because they had a best of seven and the University of Northern Texas actually beat them in the first best of seven, which in the 2018 Rocket League Collegiate Series, there is a bracket reset and they had to play another game of seven, but Arizona University came out on top in only four games and it was pretty impressive to and watch. If you, if you can get a, a, a look at that match, there's a point at which when, when they come back and they win, one of the players takes off his headphones and slams it on the table, broke it right broke in it, half. Broke it, broke <laughs> it, absolutely. It, it's crazy. You see the interactions. I love being able to watch the reactions from both teams, and you see the frustration. You see the moments. You see them congratulating each other. It's, it's truly fun to watch. And it's the fact that these kids are so passionate about what they do. Absolutely. And, and, and they, it, it shows because they truly are the best of the best in this world. All right, and that's going to do it for this week's Patch Notes. Coming up next, we have our guest today. She is the athletic director here at Lackawanna College. She is the women's basketball coach here at Lackawanna College. She's also one of our close friends. Her name is Joya Whittington, and we're going to have her right here in the hot seat to ask her a few questions about esports. <laughs> 
All right, and before we bring our guest Joya in, let's take a brief word from our sponsors. Our stadium may not hold 100,000 people, but we still compete with other colleges all over the country. Giant lecture halls? Eh, that's not really for me. I like the laid back approach. Lackawanna is close to home, with satellite centers located throughout Northeastern and Central PA. Lackawanna College, helping me help you. The choice is yours to make. Changing how I learn. Changing where I learn. Changing my life. We are happy to be sitting here with Joya Whittington. She is the athletic director here at Lackawanna College. She is also the head women's basketball coach. Joya, thanks for being on with us. Thanks, Teddy. Absolutely. So we just wanted to ask you a few questions uh, based around the sports program and around uh, Lackawanna College in general. So tell me, Joy, what did you know, if anything, about esports before this all came to be? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. I get that a lot from a lot of people that we talk about, you know. Um, it's a whole new world. It's the wild, wild west. There's a lot of... Wicked wild, wicked wild, wild west. Indeed. There's a lot of new, new a avenues to go down here. Um, so how do you feel about the esports program being developed here at Lackawanna College? Yeah, it was crazy because I, we got brought into um, our vice president's office and she said something about esports and I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. That's yeah. good. Um, good. But you don't usually get brought into the vice president's office without her having done extensive research exactly. at some point exactly. about something that she's very, very interested in. So we started doing research and um, the more I learned, uh, the more intrigued I got and then, you know, starting to understand and, and really wrap my brain around that world, what I realized more than anything is that this is an opportunity for student athletes. Absolutely. And uh, that was huge and it was a unique opportunity and that's what we're all about here at the college. So it was really exciting to just kind of dive into that world and start to see like the passion behind it mm -hmm. and the logistics behind it and said, all right, we can do it, let's find a way. Absolutely. Now I, I do have kind of, so you said you had no idea. Did you at least have kind of like an inkling? Did you know it had to do with video games or anything like that? So, I mean, the name kind of gave some part of that away, but I am a traditional sporter. So oh, okay. I am like a jock, if you can call me that. Um, so gaming was not something that I ever dabbled into in any capacity. So really just knowing that it's some kind of media-based sporting, I, I really didn't know much about it. So you obviously had immediate reservations about <laughs> calling something that didn't require, at least on its face, didn't require any sort of athletic ability. Yes, at its face. So, so what were what were like the immediate reservations that you had? Um, I don't know about reservations as much as not knowing about it. Okay. So it's not it, it wasn't a world that I understood. So of course that kind of sparks some like hold on, you know, if I'm going to be leading this, I better know as much as mm -hmm. I possibly can about it. Yeah, well, I mean that's the, that's smart because most people just kind of assume things and then just be like, no, 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 I'm going to ingrain myself right. in my own ideas. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. Exactly. And that's something that we've tried really hard to pull away from some of those stigmas. You know, we're not we're not basement dwellers. We're not keeping them locked in a facility all day just to play video games. You know, we get them out. We get them interacting with the college community. You know, and there's a lot of similarities that I've seen between traditional sports and esports. You know, we have to have a routine. We have to set scheduled practice times we have to make sure that they're staying on top of their grades I mean I say this all the time and, and every interview that I've done being a good student athlete starts with being a good student so if we don't hold the, these kids accountable with our grades and that's obviously something that's important to you with with your team yeah we we wanted to really align it with traditional sports as much as we could mm -hmm. you know and when when we sat down and we brought you guys on board that's what we talked about was how can we really you know and pe a lot of people at the college and you know in the community they did have their reservations about it but what i saw through the hiring process of a head coach and then starting to meet and understand these student athletes um it's an opportunity absolutely you know it's another opportunity to bring a different kind of student in the door that otherwise may not have had that opportunity and if we can find a way to tether them and structure them whether it's through sport through esports through you know whatever it is that the college offers I mean it's the better the better opportunity we have for retention and, and graduation and and just competition in general yeah. So now we're in we're into our first year now so we've been doing this semester and a half with an actual team running what is there is there any kind of Still, uh, you're seeing some problems maybe that you thought you would see. Are there new problems that you're seeing? Or, or are there things that have completely blown you out of the water as in like, wow, I didn't think that would happen and I'm surprised that it did? I think with anything new, there's things that we definitely didn't plan for. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what we're seeing collectively is it's, it's bigger than what we thought, mm -hmm. which is a really good problem. 
Um, I think as far as the student athlete goes and the structure of the sport in general, it's really similar. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just like Teddy said, we are structuring practice times. We're just adding structure around them to give them a better opportunity to be successful. Um, and I think our student athletes that we have in so far, I think they're great. And I think it's only going to grow from here. So that's good. Yeah. Were you surprised at all to see uh, the girls or the women that were interested in joining this? A little bit. I would definitely say a little bit to that. Um, but it's awesome because one thing that we're trying to do with athletics as a whole is really grow um, the female population that mm -hmm. are participating in sports. It's tough. And with the competition that we have around us, it's really, really hard. So to add something where we can really increase female participation, mm -hmm. it's huge for us as a whole. Yeah. And it, it doesn't stop at just being co-ed, you know. I mean, it is the first collegiate co-ed sport where everyone's included, but also there's there's opportunities for people with disabilities, people who are introverted, people who don't get out much, you know. It, it, it's really all-inclusive, and that's, it, that's what we love. Do, do, on that point, there's an interesting video online about a uh, – a vet and a military vet who was playing the new game Apex that had just released this week. Great game, by the way. Absolutely. Um, playing it with, he only has one arm and he plays holding the controller with one hand and his foot. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. I, I think that's, those are the stories we need to get out there. Mm -hmm. um, you easily can, can hear and see the negativity that comes behind, you know, oh, they're just sitting down, they're gaming. But what people don't know is, you know, the, the strength and conditioning piece that we added to this program and mm -hmm. how we're taking their and getting them out there and getting them active and, and just making sure that that's not what they're doing. You know, it's a part of it and, and they don't understand the thinking behind it, just like any other sport. Like there's a lot of cognitive thinking where we got to strategize and we have to work together. And uh, it's, it's been nothing but a, a positive experience, I think, for the whole athletic department. And I mean, just being in the room with those with with our athletes, um, you can see that th these are kids who may not not have been friends otherwise, but they get together and they I mean, they're hanging out outside of class. They they legitimately enjoy each other's company. Um, yeah. And it, when they're not playing the competitive games that we have them on, yeah. they're playing other games with each other. They're out grabbing bites to eat and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's a big part of traditional sports, too, is creating that culture, creating yep. that community. Like you said, these kids really didn't know each other. We had a lot of kids that, that moved here to the area that didn't know anyone. Mm. And now they're best friends with everyone in the room. They go to breakfast, lunch, dinner together. They hang out on the weekends. You know, um, it's, it's awesome to see that we've created that. You it's know, a family. Yes, yes. It's a Ohana nice little means thing. family. That, that, <laughs> um, so, within the next three to five years, or in, in the near future at Lackawanna College, where do you hope to see this esports program? How do you hope to see it grow? I think right now we're really leading the industry, especially in this area, um, in this region. We get calls every day about schools that want to come in, tour our facility. Mm -hmm. They want us to consult with them, and we, we're welcoming that, and we're open to that because our hope is to grow as, as, as large as we can manage right now and, yeah. and create as many teams as we can and add as many games as we can and as many um, you know levels of competition that we need to compete in so that you know we can continue to pioneer it and drive it and, and be the one in this area that started it. Yeah, and I think uh, next semester we're really going to try and corner that market by looking into creating our own conference, our own league, so we can take a little more traditional sports outlook on it, so we can release a schedule and have an easier process going through those 15-week games. Yeah, get know? all the schools working together so that exactly. we can actually create a, a larger community outside. Yeah, and it's those. just better for the student-athlete. Yeah. I mean, the chaos that we're going through trying to structure their week is already hard enough. Mm -hmm. um, if we can start to structure that competition a little bit, we're just going to put them in a better position. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we'll need to get you up there in gaming, play a little car soccer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you could probably beat me one-on-one in basketball. As, but, as, uh, as far as well, I know, it's true. soccer with cars. <laughs> yeah, that, that was close enough. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that's a I think that's a great way to describe it. That's how I describe it a lot too. The layman. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so, definitely can beat you in a game of basketball. So when you're ready, yeah, we'll see. I got take like the, a foot it's, it's and a half. It's one block up. You know, yeah. one block I know up. where the gym Second is. <laughs> believe it or not. So. All right. Uh, well, thanks again, Joy, definitely. for being here with us. Uh, we're happy to be a part of the Lackawanna College community, and uh, hopefully, we'll see you around campus soon. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. You're you got it. And again, we wanted to thank our guest, Joy Whittington, for sparing some time to be here with us today. And from all of us at The Game Room, I am Teddy. I'm Rob. And, and thank, thank you for playing. playing.